Hello everyone and you're welcome to this section. In this section we're going to learn how we can plot geographical data using Plotly Express and let's just go ahead and begin. Now the first thing we're going to do is to load up a uh, reference uh, map or reference CSV file we're going to be using. So we're going to use the uh, Gapminder built-in data set. So I've gone ahead and imported Plotly, Plotly Express SPX and also Pandas. I'll go ahead and get rid of the header and also the toolbar so we can have some uh, little space here to work. So right now I'm just going to create my country data. I'm just going to say country underscore data. It's going to be equal to our px dot data dot gap minor. Just like that and we can actually check out the country data dot tail so we can actually see the uh, last uh, few elements within this uh, data set so it says country data it's not defined let's quickly go ahead and get rid of that uh, error like that and there we have it so we have that uh, country data information showing so let's go ahead and see how we can do this so the first thing i'm going to use is to use a uh, geo scatter plot so if i do a px dot and I press the uh, tab it should actually show me the uh, scatter uh, plot so let's go ahead and check that out so I can just scroll down right here now we have a uh, scatter geo so this is what I'm going to be uh, using this scatter geo right so I'm going to be using this one if we want to actually go ahead and see the content for that uh, API we could actually do a simple help on scatter geo and if you run this we should see information on that uh, api and we can actually read up on some of the uh, parameters we can add to that information well let's just go uh, down here and let's create a an object to hold a reference so i'm going to say map underscore fig and this is going to be our equal to our px dot scatter underscore geo so now that I have this function, what I need to pass in first is a uh, data frame, right? So we actually have our country data, which we created right here. So I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to say country underscore data. And it needs a set of locations as the uh, properties. So I'm going to use the uh, ISO underscore alpha as the locations. Now the uh, ISO is an international standard that is used to specify the locations of a country based on these country codes. So if you actually go back to our uh, data frame, we can actually see that ISO that is a three letter character of ZWE. And we also have the ISO numeric. So we check that numeric column and also the uh, ISO alpha code. This should actually be uh, passed in. And we have those uh, columns on our data frame. So we're going to be using that uh, value for the locations. So for the locations, I'm going to set it to uh, ISO dash alpha which means I'm using the alphabetic column. So for the projection, I'm going to use the uh, autographic and for the color, I'll just use the uh, continent for the color. So I'm going to say color is equal to continent and for my opacity, I'll just set that to uh, 0.8 for the opacity and for the hover name. I'm going to use the uh, country, All right? Just like that. So I'm going to be using the country for the hover name and for the hover data. So I'm going to say hover underscore data. I need to pass in a list. So I'm going to get the uh, life expectancy. So it's going to be life EXP and also the population. So I'll use POP so I can have that uh, information also show when I hover the mouse over this uh, data. So another thing we can, uh, okay, we can actually leave it like that. You can uh, go ahead and add extra uh, properties if you want, but I'll just leave it as this. And then finally, I'm just going to say map underscore fig dot show 
and if everything runs fine, whoops. So let's see, uh, it says value hover name is not the name of a column in the data frame. So let's go ahead and see what we've done right here. So we've set the hover uh, underscore name, hover underscore name. We've set this to go country. All right, so uh, it's a typographical error. So let me just go ahead and run this again. So it says uh, the locations is the name of a column that it needs the value of the location. So let's go ahead and see what that uh, problem is. So we have locations. I'll set that to uh, ISO. It's actually not a uh, dash, it's underscore. So uh, I forgot to type the shift for that. So we actually ran into that problem. So you can actually clearly see sometimes it's the typographical errors and little things that really matter. But the most important thing is to look through them carefully and understand where that is coming uh, from. So uh, yeah, so we can actually see we have this information and we can see our hover data is actually showing uh, the life expectancy and population. If we wanted to add more information, we could just check maybe the year. And let's go ahead and just do that. So for our uh, over data, I'm just going to add the year, which is actually a column that exists within this uh, data frame. And if you run that, we also have the year. So that's uh, clearly how we can add this kind of uh, map. Another thing I'd like to show you is how you could actually plot this information. Let's say you need this information on your HTML page. So uh, it's actually basically straightforward. We'll just use the offline method within uh, Plotly. So first let's import Plotly. I'll just get back up and say import Plotly just like that. Once we've imported Plotly, I'm going to run this and I'll just get down over here since we've imported Plotly. So I'm just going to say Plotly dot offline dot plot and I want to plot my map underscore fig which is the object and then we need to pass in a file name argument so I'm just going to paste this or copy this uh, entire uh, document or the uh, HTML file into my drive C so I'm just going to say C column backward slash MAP I'll just call that map underscore experiment and I'll set the dot HTML and I'll set auto open to true because I want this to open when I run this. So I'm just going to say auto underscore open is going to be equal to true. So let's just go ahead and run that. And this should open up on another, uh, the same web browser page. I'm using Google Chrome and you can see we can actually have access to this information on Google Chrome. If I go ahead and jump into the location where I stored, put it in my drive C. And if I get down, I'm going to see the map I just created right now. It's called MAP underscore experiment and it's a three megabyte HTML file. So, uh, I don't want to go into the uh, details in this, but if you actually open it up, you can see the HTML code that has generated uh, this uh, project. So let's go ahead and jump back into our work and continue. So let's get back to our map data and it's going to show you the output path of where that uh, map data is. If you don't want to open this automatically, you can just set this to false and it won't actually pop up and open this when you're working with your uh, file. And another place we got that information from our, uh... so that's nice. So let's go ahead and move on. So let's actually use the density map box to plot the earthquake uh, data. So if I go back here to uh, GitHub, our raw uh, GitHub file, we can actually see the uh, data when we actually go. So let me just go ahead and take a step back to get back to the, uh, GitHub data set, the uh, GitHub data sets, and I'm just selecting the earthquake data set just right here. Uh, it's uh, under data sets, earthquakes 23k. Uh, it's a very large uh, data set that has the earthquake data. So make sure you're using the uh, raw uh, file. And remember how we got access to the raw file. So if you check down here and find the earthquake data, make sure you click on the raw right here where it says raw 
make sure you click on raw and when raw opens up let's go ahead and just copy the path to the raw earthquake data file and get back to our document and let's go ahead and create that earthquake uh, file so right here i'm just going to create a string uh, object called earth earthquakes and I will just pass in this entire uh, string and I'll make sure to convert this to a string by putting our quotes and what I'm going to do is to break this line into two and then use a, a backslash just to show that this is a string right so what I'm going to do next is to create a data frame so I'm just gonna say uh, DF is gonna be equal to PD dot read underscore CSV to read the CSV file and then we'll pass in a uh, earthquakes like that and if we want to actually see the uh, first few elements let's just uh, run this and we can see our uh, first five elements within that earthquake uh, data frame so what I'll quickly do next is to create a figure and then use store that value in a density uh, map box so uh, let's go ahead and just say fig equals to our plotly express dot density underscore map box All right so it needs a uh, data frame as an argument and also needs a longitude and a latitude so how do I know what it needs so let me just quickly go up here and create a cell above so now I have this cell above I'm just going to uh, type in help on the de px dot density underscore map box just like that and if i run this i should actually see the list of our arguments that can be passed into this so it needs a longitude and a latitude and also we can pass a z data with a hover name just like we have in our density plot so let me just go ahead and close this and move on to pass that information so for my latitude i'm going to use the latitude column so this is a la latitude for the longitude, I'm going to use the longitude column. I'm being very careful to check my spelling, so I don't know. So I'm using the longitude and latitude columns. And let's just go ahead and keep on adding some of the uh, parameters we need. So for my Z, I'm going to set this to the magnitude. Magnitude for the radius. I'm going to set that value to 10 and I want to center this so I'm just going to say center and this is going to be a dict dictionary object that is going to take two values of the longitude and latitude so I'm just going to say lat equals 9 long equals let's just use a 9 by 9 or 9 by 8 anyone it doesn't matter so and then I'll set the zoom factor to one. So for the hover name, I'll just set this to uh, the date. And then for the map box style, map box, I think it's underscore style. I'm going to use the uh, watercolor, the stamen watercolor. So stamen dash watercolor so how do I know that there is a map box style called stamen watercolor again it's from right here if we actually jump down here and let's just keep going well under the map box style we have basic that's going to be provided some of these styles need an API key but we don't have that so this is where I got it from and we can have the uh, these values to, uh, do not require a uh, API token. So we have the OSM, which is the OpenStreetMap. We have white background, Carto Positron, Carto Dark Matter, Stamen Terrain, Stamen Toner, Stamen Watercolor. So I'm using the Stamen Watercolor, but you can feel free to use any of the free, you know, uh, map box style options that are available. And for the title, I'm going to set, set the title to, uh, let's say, Earthquake. data 19 
65, whoops, 1965 to 2016. And then I'll just do a fig dot show. So we can actually show that figure. So again, let's carefully look. So we have our data frame, which is uh, the, the Gapminder uh, data uh, earthquake data frame we've created right here. So we're good to go. And then we have our latitude, we have our longitude, we also have our magnitude for that earthquake, we have the radius, we have our uh, center position, which we set to uh, latitude 9, longitude 9. We've set a zoom factor of 1, a hover name, with the uh, date option, we have the watercolor map box. If everything seems good, let's just go ahead and run this. And we have this uh, information, you know, showing. So if we actually take our cursor over these points, we can actually see these dates and we can actually see the uh, magnitudes for those earthquakes in those locations based on the longitude and latitude data. So let's go ahead and change this to, let's say, uh, open street map. So I think it's a uh, open dash street dash map, right? So we can actually change that. Let's see if uh, We've got that spelling right. So yeah, on the map box tile. Yeah, I think we're right. It's a. It's, uh, let's just go ahead and test it. Okay, we're not getting any uh, output, so I'll just go ahead and check out and see why. So it's actually not really... And I think why it's not showing is simply because of I forgot this T. Been making a lot of mistakes right here. It's not nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we can actually see the uh, open street map uh, option showing us those locations. And we can actually play around with them and, you know, kind of customize this to our liking. And yeah, so basically that's how we can uh, kind of like use this uh, data set. And when we zoom in, we can actually see more of the information popping up and we can know which, uh, which of the uh, region where that uh, information is coming from. For instance, we can see this like on a border between Kenya and Tanzania. And we can see that uh, information. So uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Really sorry about the uh, typographical errors. I've been making a lot of typographical errors, and that's not really nice. But it's I actually like leaving them so you can see where those errors are coming from. Sometimes it's not a uh, module problem. We just actually make mistakes. Really sorry about that, guys. Apologies. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at the uh, Coral Play maps, Coral, uh, Coral Pleth. And we'll see how we can use the Coral Pleth map to plot moral data. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson.